Hey, welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 24, verses 11 through 16 today. So here's the setup. King Saul has been chasing David. David is a fugitive, but he's he's it's unjust. There's nothing David's done wrong, but King Saul's against him. Saul went into the cave. David happened to be in the cave. He could have killed him. Uh, Saul certainly would have killed David, but while he was in the cave, David chose not to kill him. And now Saul comes out of the cave. And here comes David out after him, and he has something to say to him. Moreover, my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you, know and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand, and I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. Let the Lord judge between you and me, and let the Lord avenge me on you. But my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancients says, wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? Therefore let the Lord be judge and judge between you and me, and see and plead my case, and deliver me out of your hand. And so here he is, and he, he suddenly holds up in his hand, and guess what he's got there? He's got a piece of Saul's royal robe. He cut it off while he was in the cave, uh, while Saul was wearing the thing. And he's cut it off, and now he shows it to Saul. Here it is. I See, here's evidence. I could have killed you, but I didn't. And this is evidence that I'm not against you. And so David is kind of making his case. Everybody can see here that Saul's pursuing David kind of like a madman. But David is, is instead of killing Saul... David is saying, you know, whatever you're doing to me, I am choosing not to be opposed to you. I am choosing not to be going against you. Hey, this is kind of an interesting piece, isn't it? By actual facts, by actual acts, David is uh, demonstrating that he doesn't have ill intent or ill will towards Saul. So good for David. And, you know, they could they could all rush him maybe and grab him because, you know, the soldiers are all there. They're within... Uh, vocal range here. Nobody has a speaker or a radio or a phone. This is this is all happening, you know, across the across a small distance. What uh, what do we think about this? I think it's interesting that David had opportunity to kill his enemy, and he could have perhaps justified doing so. He's being hunted. He's had his uh, marriage sort of messed up with Saul. Taking the, everything's kind of been damaged by Saul, and there's no reason for it. But David refuses to be acting against the Lord's anointed. There's, there's, uh, there's some, some good things here for us to think about. You know, many times leadership in a, uh, a corporation, leadership in a church, uh, different times our leadership, we'll look at that leadership and we'll say, man, there's some big problems going on here. Uh, this just isn't right. Uh, what do we do? Do we just throw up our hands and start a re revolution or a rebellion and go off and do our own thing? Well, there's there's a time and a place, I think, for some of that. Yes, I agree. But but what we have here is uh, David's not doing that. David is submitting to King Saul, even though it's unjust. And now he's sort of made his case. It's going to be pretty hard for Saul to get out of this. So we'll see what he says tomorrow morning. But sometimes, you know, what you just have to do is demonstrate your innocence. Just demonstrate that you do not bear ill will by actual acts. David, by actual acts, chooses just to cut off the edge of the robe, and he even felt bad about that. But he he could have also used that, and the people next to him told him to take and cut off, you know, cut Saul in the neck. So David is showing his, his goodness, and it's going to work out for his good. So anyway, we can show our goodness sometimes by simply choosing not to respond in kind and look at the example here of David. Something for us and some of our sometimes, whether we intended to get into them or not, sometimes people come to us and enforce a conflict upon us. Here's a pattern, something useful, a way towards peace. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for showing us through the example of your servant David a way towards peace. Now, this isn't always going to work out this way. We know that. But uh, David determined that he would not act against one who was legitimately in authority. Thank you for a, a suggestion toward peace, uh, which will work in some cases. Thank you for David's gracious behavior here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So may the Lord bless us in conflicts, even if we don't start them. Uh, certainly may he help us uh, to have peace whenever we're able to do so. God be with you today in all that you do.